Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Bitches RV in Coldwater, Michigan with a really hefty wind today. Sorry if that affects the microphone. I'm out here freezing my off. And uh, I said face off, by the way. Uh, that was some unnecessary editing, but it sure is funny. Um, taking a look at the 29 RLI Cougar. This is a floor plane that updated, uh, basically came out last year. It was a revision of the previous model, but what they did here is they made this a fantastic traveling floor plane for somebody who wants to spend a lot of time RVing, or you just want something like kind of classy and big, where you want is all the living room space you can get, but in the minimum amount of length you can get. That's the kind of role that this one's going to fulfill in the RV market. We have opposing living room super slides with an island, all kinds of window coverage over on the door side of the RV instead of the poop side of the RV, double power awnings, a, uh, a hitch on the back for some accessories, factory standard solar, zero to 110 degree weather package. I wish that furnace was running today. Sadly, it is not. Um, <laughs> you've got Goodyear tires now standard, a, uh, an Equiflex uh, pin box and suspension combo for more comfortable ride and handling. And that's really really going to be a big benefit. Um, rather than a big travel trailer, something like this will give you the same living space, uh, but it will tow and go and handle so much more nicely. That being said, I'm well aware of the fact that this says the name Cougar Half Ton on the front. I do generally recommend a three quarter ton and up on this Cougar. Half Ton is the name of the RV, not necessarily a recommendation for towing vehicle. And if you appreciate little fair facts like that, like I'll volunteer another one from the factory. This comes with a Camp Queen backbreaker death wafer kind of mattress, but it's easy to swap out. But that's the kind of info that I want to give you. The good with the bad so that you can make the best, most educated decision possible. And let's see what else this one might have to offer, good, bad, ugly, or otherwise, and you decide what you like. Along the way, let me know what you like and dislike. Let's compare some notes in the comments, shall we? So let's start taking a look here and breaking down in more detail all the little different features and qualities and, and maybe less obvious aspects of this RV to see if it might be a good fit for you. First of all, one of the things that I, I you know, I'm going to talk a lot about the big living room space on this, but I actually think one of the uh, more unsung qualities of this camper is the, the symmetrical kitchen uh, with a larger 22-inch oven, by the way. Now, it's not one of those big, like, almost residential sized ovens but it's a lot bigger than the 16 inch easy bake oven you get a lot of things i do kind of wish those power outlets were down where they were a little bit easier to reach you see how there's some outlets under those overhead cabinets but what you're going to see in this rv is uh that there are plenty of outlets all over the place and uh like over there at that little you might call it like a little coffee bar you can see some outlets right down low where you can reach them now, as we're talking about outlets, and I think I've said the word outlets more than I ever thought I'd say the word outlets in my entire life so far, and apparently I, I'm not quite done, uh, you might see some of those, like the one on that far wall over there has that little yellow sticker on it. That is indicating to us that it is wired to the inverter circuit of this RV. So that if you, uh, you know, want to be able to power up some of those appliances, like if you're at a traveling stop or if you're going to get away from the parks for a little bit, uh, this does have the potential ability to, to operate those outlets. Now, you do have a choice also between a table and chairs and a booth dinette. Either way, though, um, the table basically is, is bolted to the wall. So it, it, no matter what, you're basically looking at a no-knee knocker. They might have noticed I had all the window coverage over here on the door side of the RV. You do have a full viewing window in the door, plus you got the big cross breeze windows on uh, either side of the slide there to be able to, like, you know, peek out and kind of see who's here. And your input, fed back to Cougar, largely through these videos, is the reason that nearly industry-wide, those shades are uh, have been flipped now to be installed from the, uh, the bottom of the window to the top. And uh, what that allows you to do is, just like I've kind of demonstrated it right there, you can basically maintain privacy for the most part. You can leave that uh, pretty much half pulled, but if somebody knocks on the door, it's easy for you to kind of peek over the top and uh, see who's there. Now this has an awesome entertainment center. You are at Boardwalk and Park Place right here, baby. You got that electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster down below. Giant 4K TV staring you straight in the eye sockets. And the TV's not mounted all the way up against the ceiling. The TV's actually down where you can, uh, you know, it's at head level where you can actually see it a little more easily, which uh, I, I think a lot of people are really going to prefer. Now, a couple interesting little details here on some Cougar construction. You might notice with the way they build their slide-in walls, 
they can actually run power outlets where they're a little bit easier to reach. So if you wanted to, you know, plug a phone charge or something there, you could. Technically, your uh, theater seat does have USB plugs right on the side of the console, but those are thigh busters. I feel like I wouldn't want to use them because I'd break my USB plugs. Um, and then our side stands, you see how they have household and USB outlets on both sides of that, uh, that uh, trifold sleeper sofa. But you may notice a light switch uh, back there on that rear wall. If a wall is laminated, you can't usually run wiring in it, but they've done that here. But if you thump on the outside back wall of this, you'll see that it is laminated. That's because they use a method I call Schrodinger's rear wall, where it is both laminated and non-laminated. So essentially, they have a non-laminated skeleton on the inside uh, edge of the RV, and then they have a laminated wall on the outside to just make you feel like you can fist pound it and feel good about it. Some people really like that. Diving a little bit deeper here, kicking open those theater seats, they are wall huggers, so you don't have to wrestle that stupid thing around. And thank you, Cougar, for including the door struts to keep those overhead cabinet doors open so you don't got to head bobble those like you're... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, playing soccer or something like that. I never would have been. Uh, people who can bounce a ball off their head where they want to go, you, you folks are amazing. I don't even know how you, you manage to successfully do that. Anyway, um, you see how this does have a, a cool, like, pivot, double pivot TV. So you can watch it from the dining. You can watch it from the, uh, you know, from the, obviously from the theater seat, back from the high to bed. And let's say that you have some guests for the evening. It's really cool that you can basically turn that TV and allow them to kind of enjoy some entertainment in the evening hours while maybe you retire up to the, the front bedroom. Uh, that is very handy, by the way, if you've got an active body little grandkid and you need to throw on some SpongeBob just to get them to settle down. You ever notice how if you can get a kid to quit moving for 30 seconds, they're snoring in a flash? Um, that also seems to be holding more and more true as I uh, gain additional years on my life here. <laughs> Uh, that's a 12 volt DC compressor fridge by default, by the way. There's also a gas electric two way option. The 12 volt fridge is bigger, faster cooling, but it does use more power if you're going to be uh, off grid. Uh, the way that we're looking at this today is probably pretty much the way I think I would want one. Eh, you know what? No, there's two different things I would personally want out of one of these. I would personally like to go with the 400 uh, solar package uh, with factory inverter and a second air conditioner, which is always optional, but not standard on these. In an RV this size, that's something I would personally like to go with. Now, what's also kind of cool, over here in the super slide, all the lights above your seating can dim up and down, which is really handy. Like uh, if you want to use them like a little bit of a nightlight if somebody's on that high to bed, or um, you know, if it's like movie time or early morning and you just don't want to be totally blasted with all of the lighting there. Now, the uh, the bathroom and the bedroom in these uh, smaller, I call them, you know, uh, cougar kitten, little cat, fifth wheels. Um, they are, this is very, very similar to what you might have seen before, but maybe you've never seen one before. So I don't want to really cut corners. I want to show you they got a porcelain foot flush stool right here. It has fantastic leg room. I think it's got excellent elbow, hip, and shoulder room. I think that if you're a little bit larger than the average bear, you're still going to fit in here very well. And as you see, you can reach up and, well, hang out at the bar. <laughs> Which... Uh, used to mean something uh, different when I was in my early to mid-20s, but I never really had the constitution for a lot of whole bar time like that. The upper deck headroom in here is fantastic in that shower. That is something that these do a little bit better than a lot of other RVs in this class. They're about uh, three or four inches taller in the upper deck uh, versus some other things that I've seen. And there's plenty of other brands that match what Cougar's doing here as well. Now I want to address something. You can see how the shower panels bowed out a little bit. It's really nothing to worry about. I get that it looks unsightly. I'm not going to ignore it. The, uh, it's, it's cold. And when stuff gets cold, it wants to shrink. So it's curling a little bit is what's happening here. And a lot of people think, oh, it's not sealed right there. It's not supposed to be. You Actually, here's a pro tip. Don't seal that seam. That is intended. Like What you don't realize is this bottom tub portion actually goes up like four to six inches. There's a blade behind it. And the goal there is just like, let's say hypothetically, you know, you do somehow manage to get water up behind that panel, even though it's sealed up here, even though that shouldn't happen. If it does happen, you want that water to be able to trickle down and bleed out and it will get caught by that uh, shower pan and just go harmlessly down the drain. That's the goal and the intention there. Looking a little bit of sink storage space right here. 
what looks like could be really cool kind of wastebasket space is largely occupied by like plumbing stuff you know and that is a big lipitorage storage cabinet right up there not just a mirror mirror on the wall and you might also notice how they do fully frame out all of their entry doors in these there's not a whole lot of gap action going on a little more uh privacy in that regard their air conditioning system also allows them to do that now speaking of which standard 15,000 btu single air unit with a residential air filtration system they call blade pure always 50 amp always second air ready like we're looking at here in this size rv i would probably want the second air uh installed but the good news is depending on where you're shopping we might already have that installed uh, uh, you know some of our stores uh and if not we can always apply that now again being fair and candid and being blunt as a spoon that is the backbreaker death way for camp queen and you might notice how it's kind of curled up looking a little funny on the end it's so lightweight that the gas struts under that mattress are actually doing a little bit of uh lifting on it right now so uh kind of keep that in mind now i'd like what's your take on this a little bit of carpet up here in the bedroom I've had a lot of people say, I like a little bit of carpet in the bedroom so that my toes aren't quite so cold if I sling them over the bed, uh, you know, when I uh, wake up. And some people say, I don't want any carpet if I can have it. So what is your vote? What's the right way to go there? More of those inverter prepped outlets up by the headboard plus USB plugs makes that extremely like phone charger type friendly and whatnot. And they have redesigned their closet slide across the brand. Taking a look at that a little bit deeper. You now have a, a double sized taller closet so that you don't have stuff that gets wrinkly and doesn't, you know, drape all the way down. And then with three bigger dresser drawers that are individually opened as opposed to uh, last year, you had to open the closet doors to open a dresser drawer at the bottom, and it was just kind of cumbersome and clunky, and I don't know that everybody necessarily loved it, you know? But no matter what a manufacturer does, it always seems like somebody says they should have done it better. So do you like what they've done with that closet, or could they improve it a little bit further? And as long as you're leaving me a comment, let me know, you know, I've talked about a lot of different options. How would you want one of these built? But one of the reasons I call this one an awesome traveler for people who want to, you know, do some extended times in one place but travel around is when the slide is closed up in the bedroom, you don't lose the function of the bed. Something that isn't discussed uh, a lot in the RV industry is that when the bed's in an east-west slide, you may not necessarily be able to use it. Um, it's just not always properly supported. And the thing is, no manufacturer really says this one is, this one isn't. No one can guarantee it. Now, you might have noticed the bathroom door suddenly shifted. Again, I've got this in true road mode here. That is how it latches for transit. So you might actually want to put a little sticker over here next to your uh, in-command control panel that just says, like, you know, uh, shower door. So it doesn't slide, like, slide around and slam around in transit. And a little pro tip there for you. Now, one of the things that they did here when they converted this to the 29RLI from its predecessor, the 30 RLS, is they made the refrigerator travel functional. So I think this one nicely qualifies for nap crap and snacktastic travel access. And you like the fact that we close it up and show you that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, or just leave me a little note. So say thanks, nerd. Kind of a cool opportunity here, too, where I had a, uh, a 2022 Cougar fifth wheel and a 23 Cougar fifth wheel side by side. Personally, I do like this lighter, brighter, uh, updated uh, exterior, but that's personal. That's subjective. I'd be kind of curious to know what you think. That being said, I don't foresee Cougar switching back anytime soon. And you saw that I flashed the extra weights and measures, uh, or, or flashed the weights and measures for the RV up there again. Uh, once again, the name of the RV is called Cougar Half Ton. I don't necessarily feel it's a good fit for most half tons, and a lot of people might look at there or listen to that and go, well, why? And uh, basically, the answer is the hitch weight on the RV uh, is going to exceed or put a little too much pressure on potential payload ratings for the vast majority of half ton pickups. That is uh, one of the reasons, like, I don't know that you gotta go, you don't gotta go dually diesel to go carrying something like this around. But I do think a, uh, uh, you know, a general gas three quarter ton with a solid payload package would be a good fit for this. Now I've done a bad job in the past of showing you that front cavity. That is where they keep the spare tire. And you might note a couple people have actually kind of uh, mentioned in the comment section, 
why don't you ever talk about the lithium batteries that come with these? Um, currently, at the time of this filming, these Cougars are including um, a uh, basically a set of lithium batteries from Dragonfly, which is really awesome. But it's kind of a temporary thing, which is why I haven't really delved into it a whole lot. Cur like, you might find a lot of the Cougars out there right now have those batteries on them, but uh, in the future, like if you watch this video in February, that may not necessarily apply. It was kind of a, a, a temporary little thing that they partnered up on. And I want my videos to be as accurate as possible for as long as possible. That's why I leave you a link in the video description where you can check for pricing and availability when you're ready on a specific unit. Because if you watch this video four months later, whatever price it was at the time I made this video, it doesn't apply anymore. You may have noticed that uh, new tankless on-demand water heater. Uh, over here, you see that they do have an enclosed docking center, but along with factory solar up top, you have that portable side mount solar prep plug right there, which is kind of cool. Um, word is that, you know, that tiny little bit of like felt stuff that they're using, that's probably going to be phasing away on the, in those buckets, those will be going to a plastic ABS bucket. These front bulkhead walls will probably remain the same though. Now we're looking at the base 200 watt factory solar package. Uh, that comes with a 15 amp controller. And you see also over here, they are including a dedicated disconnect strictly for the solar panel. So when it's in storage, the solar panel isn't trying to live power the converter and basically, you know, burning it out. Um, it's, it's really cool that Keystone's doing that. They're the only manufacturers I'm aware of who are really uh, offering a dedicated disconnect strictly for the solar package. And uh, I think that that's really cool because that's probably not a problem that would rear its head during the warranty phase of the RV. So they're building this camper looking forward. They're building it with the idea of longevity. You may have also saw that little thing that said inverter prep, uh, all Cougars, are ready for like six or seven outlets to be run uh, to an inverter should you choose to add one. And the more advanced solar packages include those. Now, I'm right up next to another RV here, so I don't have a really good opportunity to truly showcase the dual power awnings on this. The, the front one's a little short, the rear one on the face of the slide I think is actually a little bit larger. And you're going to start seeing more of these more ride, they call it safety handle. And first of all, it is cool that it extends out and all the way from the bottom step, from the, of course I should put put it on camera, right from the ground, you have something to grab onto. Now it's a little wiggly right now because I don't have it cinched down and tightened down. And it's not really made to be reefed side by side. It's made to be pushed like straight down this way, not this way. But the reason I like this is it folds down flat. The traditional uh, XL folding handles on RVs, they could be folded over the door. And if you're camping in the RV and some unmonitored neighborhood child whose parents sadly uh, have not raised them the way that they should have, uh, they could flip that handle over the door. And the only way for you to get out of the RV is to either dog the bounty hunter boot kick that door wide open and break the sucker, or, um, you know, open your windows and be like, hey! like you know some southern damsel in distress and uh you know it'd be the only way to get yourself out of there without breaking it you'd have to call upon the assistance of uh, your neighbors 300 pound accessory hitch on the back this also does have reverse travel lighting in those uh tail light elements right there and you might notice how all the windows open for airflow and they are max airflow uh or, or, and they are tinted windows now a quick note on something I, uh, we, you know, in the Bish's RV lineup, we have all kinds of different RVs built all kinds of different ways. And I've had people recently start asking me, are the slide end walls on Cougars laminated? And no, they're not. And then people say, well, doesn't that mean they're not insulated? And the answer is no. So I don't know where that kind of rhetoric misinformation is coming from, but a laminated slide end wall, a non-laminated slide end wall, neither has uh, greater structural integrity, neither has greater insulation quality. There is more than one way to skin a cat. Like, I guess the presumption is if it's not laminated, they don't insulate it. Well, that's, that's not true. They insulate stick and tin campers and they're not laminated, you know, anyway. Um, let's take a look up on the roof. Now you see that this has that polar white roof membrane and they're using white AC shrouds and they use radiant barrier across the uh, roof, uh, down the nose, under the be belly, uh, over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house. Well, 
all that kind of adds up along with their blade pier air system to create a uh, RV that goes beyond what most manufacturers test for. A lot of brands will test for zero to 100 degrees. Cougar pushes it like salt and pepper up to 110 degrees. And I think more of us would probably be concerned with hot climate camping than cold climate camping. So when you're going to actively be using the RV the most, that's when Cougar is going to perform the best. So I'm gonna head back inside and warm up a little bit. My blood's not quite Michigan thick yet, you know, uh, when the cold weather comes in. After a while, I'll be, I'll be wearing like sweatpants and a, and a tank top out here, and uh, I'll, I'll be plenty warm. But for now, it's a little bit chilly. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna go inside. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna just put my hands under the, uh, the warm air dryer for a while until I get some feeling back in them. Then they start to hurt, so then I dig them in some ice to numb them back out. It's, it's a brilliant strategy. Isn't that what they mean by icy hot? I don't know, anyway. If you'd like to see where we have one of these parked and what we're asking, check the link in the video description. I'll also leave you some similar floor plans down there, like Jayco makes a very comparable head-to-head -head model. Or if you'd prefer something with a bed slide, I've got you some options there too. When you're ready, we're ready. Give us a call. Let us know, uh, you know what you're looking for. And uh, in the meantime, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone. Yeah.